Hi everybody, welcome to English 112. My name is Lillian Ruiz and I'm the instructor for this online class. And what I wanted to do today was to tell you a little bit about the course and some of the things that we'll be doing over the course of the semester. So I see today as a kind of introductory class as people are still adding and dropping, getting their textbooks, things of that nature. And then we can begin in earnest next class. So this class video is the way that I will be communicating information to you as if we were meeting in class. So each class which would normally be on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Each, every Tuesday and Thursday, I'll have a video talking about class content that I'm going to ask you to watch. And then there will be an attendance question about that particular video that I will ask you to answer in the discussion section. And I'll talk a little bit about all of that when I review our Moodle site. And then that will count as your attendance for the class. It's not evaluated in any other way. The assignments that you will be doing, your papers and also your journals, which I, I also will be talking about, you will do the same sort of assignments that we would be doing in an in-person class. You just will be handing them in to me online and I will be returning them back to you online. As you know, this is a late start class. So that means that we're just beginning the semester today, even though the traditional semester has been underway for a couple of weeks now. However, we will finish at the same time that the traditional semester finishes. And you'll see that in our Moodle site, if you were to look above, that there are, are several elements there that probably will be of use to you over the course of the semester. One is a folder entitled Syllabus and Other Documents. That's where I'm going to be holding any of the documents that I would normally have distributed to you as a handout. What that includes at this point would be the syllabus and the course outline that I'm going to be reviewing to you. And you can see that you can, once you go onto that folder, you can go all the way to the bottom and you can download that. Or if you're having problems with downloading, then you can see that I've put the text in the body as well. So you can do one of either. And at this point, I've got, again, the syllabus and the course outline, and I'll be adding more as the semester progresses. There also is beneath that a list of due dates. Those due dates are indicated in your course outline, but I also wanted to separate them off so that you could see just the due dates. And you'll also see that there is an area for past class sessions because what I will do on Moodle is keep the current week active and then the previous weeks, I will move them into previous classes so that you can access them over the course of the semester. But what you will be seeing on the Moodle site is that particular week. And then you can see that I've also included some links for class discussion. And this is where you would be in the discussion form answering the attendance question for that particular class. And I'm not requiring you, as I'll talk about um, soon, to respond to your peers, um, but certainly if you're moved to, you can. I think of it almost like participating in class. But what I do ask is that you read all of your peers' responses and my responses as well. And this is a small class. I mean, right now I've got a, a roster of three. I don't know if that means that I'm going to be getting additional individuals over the course of the semester. We will see um, because we still have a little bit of time with drop ad because this is a late start class. So it's going to be particularly important since it's such a small class that all of us are responding to the attendance questions. I'll respond to all of your responses. And at the very least, you're reading everybody else's responses. You'll also see that there's an area for a class chat room. So in the event that you or I or we decided that we wanted to have a class chat, we could utilize that. And there also is an area that gives you my Zoom link. And that's also something that you can access through um, contacting me via email, but you can also directly do that. So what I'm going to do is to review the first handout that I have called the syllabus. And you can see that this is English 112, Section 2 for Spring 2022, and it's being offered on Moodle. 
My name is there, Lillian Ruiz. Most people call me Lillian. I tend to be pretty informal. Um, you can call me whatever you feel comfortable with. My phone number is there, and I'm half on campus and half online, so that either you may be able to catch me in my office, especially during my office hours. But if I'm not in, you can always leave a message and I'll get back to you. My email is there as well. You can see my email is my surname. It's not the first initial that you usually find with surnames. To give you an idea of how long I've been at GCC, when I first started, we were just instituting the email system across campus. I started in 1993, and it never occurred to anyone when we were first establishing email to use a first initial because there might be duplicates and surnames. So that gives you an idea of how long um, I've been at the college. And I mostly teach English classes, but I also teach public speaking classes, and I also teach media classes. So I teach a mixture of classes, um, including a class in horror film um, that you might have heard of. So if you've seen some posters about campus, if you're on campus, yes, that one's my class. So my office hours. Well, first, let me begin with my office. North 328A is inside the Inclusion and Diversity Center. And my office hours are Monday and Wednesday from 12 to 1, Tuesday, Thursday, 9 to 10. And by appointment and this year this semester i'm doing something a little bit different i'm holding in-person office hours and also holding zoom office hours at the same time we'll see how that works um certainly you can make an appointment with me if those times don't work for you but unless i've been pulled away at a meeting or something i should be available on zoom as well as in person during those particular times you can see the textbooks, the first being the Bedford Introduction to Literature, 11th edition, but you can use previous editions or editions that follow. Obviously, your page numbers will be different than the page numbers I have listed on our course outline, but if you're willing to do a little bit of work to find those readings, then certainly you can. I have a copy of the book on reserve in the GCC library, so you can also access the text in that way. I will, whenever I find links for the literature that we're reading, provide you with those links so that you can find those readings online as well. Unfortunately, I have not been able to find the textbook information online because of copyright, but I have been able to find just about all of the literature. So as that becomes um, applicable, I will share that with you. I also have an additional text that used to be included in an older version of the textbook, but it no longer is, entitled The Raisin in the Sun. It's a superb play written by Lorraine Hansberry, and I thought it was really worth order, ordering an additional text, which you can get paperback, and it should be fairly inexpensive. And again, you can access these texts through the GCC bookstore or the GCC library because I put them on reserve or you can also access them through online vendors such as Amazon. So you've got a lot of options there. And I've got a note that it's assumed that students will have a good dictionary at the source for reference, which I assume you have access to with your computers, but having access to something and actually using it are two very different things. Since this is a writing class, definitely you wanna get into the habit of using a dictionary and also using a the source. So, I wanted to talk a little bit about the course description, just to remind you what you signed up for, that this class builds and extends on the academic writing process and skills introduced in English Composition 1. Students develop close reading abilities for a variety of literary and non-literary texts and hone critical thinking skills, as well as research and documentation skills, using a variety of texts that may include essays, fiction, poetry, and drama, amongst other texts. Writing assignments emphasize the formal, researched, and documented essay and include creative assignments and, and include creative experiments and literary analysis. Course readings include selections from a wide variety of authors, genres, and texts that engage students in analysis and research. Students may receive credit for only either English 112, 114, or 116. So basically, all of these satisfy the Composition 2 requirement. English 101 is considered the Comp 1 requirement, and it's assumed that you've all taken English 101 or the equivalent in another institution. This is the English class that talks about the writing process in general and how to write a college paper. 
English 112 or 114 or 116 focuses on literature as well as focusing on just general writing. 112, the class we're in, will review things such as short story, drama, and poetry. If you were in English 114, you would do some creative writing. So you would actually create your own short stories and dramas and poems in addition to reading some drama, short stories, and poems from other authors. And English 116 includes a cinema component. So in addition to analyzing literature from an academic perspective, you would analyze cinema from an academic perspective. Now, the if it turns out that you don't think you've met the requirements for this class, please let me know. Learning outcomes. As a result of successfully completing this course, students will be able to, one, develop an appreciation for and understanding of literature. This is how we're going to begin the semester, to try to define what literature is, and then talk a little bit about how to read it, and finally, how to write about it. Number two, to see reading and writing as an ever-evolving process and that ultimately your reading and writing skills improve over a lifetime. Um, and I, I truly believe I'm a better writer now and reader than I was five years ago. Um, so that I suppose is good that you have me as a teacher now. I truly believe I will be better still five years from now. Um, and unfortunately, you're not in my class five years from now. You're in my class now. And it's the same for you, is that your skills will continue to develop over a lifetime. And one of the things we're going to talk about with literature is the need to reread it. And that each time you reread it, you can bring new meaning to it. So if you've read something before, it's not that you're done reading it. You've only just begun, if it's truly a piece of literature, as we will discuss. To use the rules of formal academic writing, that there are definitely rules in place and formal academic writing is very similar to the writing of business. So this is how you can transfer those skills to the business world. But you also wanna promote each student's unique sense of voice in their writing. You don't wanna sound like me or the textbook, you wanna sound like myself. And I kinda of liken it to driving and that we all have to follow certain rules. But we all drive differently and that varies based on the weather conditions, the vehicle we're driving, and our own strengths and weaknesses as a driver. And it would be the same with writing. You just need to know when you can adapt the rules, when it's appropriate to do so, and when it's inappropriate to do so. To improve oral and written communication skills, and I have that on all of my syllabi, and to effectively utilize word processing, email, search engines, and the internet and the study of literature, because ultimately we probably all have experience of going on the internet and getting thousands of hits. That's not necessarily the most effective way for finding information. So what I am going to do is to emphasize the idea that while there's nothing wrong with going on the open internet, we definitely have resources through the GCC library, such as databases that are much more efficient in terms of finding online material that is much more accurate. Um, that said, you should always question anything that you read, but the open internet allows anybody to post anything as opposed to a database which has been vetted that individuals have been paid to review the information in a database. So it's more trustworthy. And the public doesn't have access to these databases because they're subscription based, but you have access to them because you are a GCC student. So in other words, your tuition dollars at work, you can get access to things online that the general public can't. And I encourage you to take advantage of that when you're trying to find out information. So procedures, again, I'm going to try to duplicate as much as possible what we would all have experienced if we were meeting in person. So if we were meeting in person, we would meet on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 10 a.m. So instead, what I'm going to do by 10 a.m. on Tuesdays and Thursdays is post a video of myself discussing the class material that I would normally discuss in class. And in fact, I'm going to try to post that material um, the night before, but certainly by Tuesday, Thursday at 10 a.m. And then you have a 48 hour deadline to watch that particular video for the class and to answer the corresponding attendance question for that class in our class discussion form. And if you need additional time, just ask me for an extension. I'll be happy to grant it to you. Your answer on the discussion form is your attendance for that class. So again, it's not evaluated in any way. It just counts as attendance. Any additional interaction you have with your classmates in the discussion form is participation, similar to the kind of participation you would have in a live classroom. 
I know some students learn best by participating while others learn best by listening. And I, I think both are very valid ways to learn. So you can decide for yourself how little or how much to participate and interact with your peers' responses. But you should read all of the peer responses and all of my responses to the peers to try to get an idea of what we would have had during a class discussion. And then the written assignments that I'll be talking about, things like journals, papers, and there even is a final exam, all of which we uh, I will be discussing, you can send to my email address via PDF. Again, that works best for my grading program. I will return the assignments to your email with my feedback. So course requirements, some pretty general stuff that you're expected to complete all reading and the writing assignments by the due date. Now I'm on the, the back of the first page of the syllabus, if you had printed that out. Two out-of-class papers will be assigned over the course of the semester, one approximately midway through the semester after we've had some time to discuss what literature is, and then one towards the ending of the semester. And you are also going to be writing periodic journal entries, informal responses to a selection of the readings that we've done over the course of the semester. And I also have a final exam, and the final exam will be scheduled at the time that the final exam would have been scheduled at GCC if we were meeting in person. A final exam will be open book, open notes, and you will have a 24-hour period in which to respond to the final. If you were taking the final in person, you would have a two-hour um, time slot to respond. So I'm not expecting that you devote more than two hours or so to the final. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about all of the specifics of all of these in a few moments. But I just wanted to draw your attention to the Institutional Services Disability Statement. If you are returning to GCC, you probably have seen this on other syllabi, that Greenfield Community College values inclusion and equal access to its programs and activities and is committed to fostering an environment of respect and full participation. Our goal is to create learning environments that are equitable, inclusive, and welcoming. There are aspects of the instruction or design of this course that result in barriers to your inclusion or accurate assessment or achievement. Please notify the instructor as soon as possible. And if you are a student with a disability and you need reasonable academic accommodations, please contact the Office of Disability Services as soon as possible. You can see their contact information, their website, as well as phone numbers. So I wanted to talk about some of the assignments coming up, the first being the journal. Basically, the journals are meant as informal responses to some of the literature we're going to be reading. We are beginning with short story. This will be our first unit. Our second unit will be drama. Our third unit will be poetry. So for all of these units, we need to establish what short story is or what drama is or what poetry is. Then we need to establish how to read it and how to write about it. And then we'll talk about you selecting three examples from the short story unit, three examples from the drama unit, and then finally three examples from the poetry unit to write a journal about. And basically, and I'll read you the section here about journals, that reading and writing is an ongoing process, as I had indicated earlier. The journals are meant as an opportunity for students to discuss their reactions to what they're reading. Hence, guidelines will be very informal, as each student should use the journal as an opportunity to explore the literature the way the student feels would be most beneficial. That said, I'll give you some suggestions in class, but on the whole, the journal should reflect any relevant thoughts or questions, as we will soon determine the questions are more important sometimes than the answers that the student has about the readings. I think it's a good idea to do this immediately after you're done with the reading when the ideas are still fresh. Some students say they like to do it as they are reading, as they're note taking. Some students say they like to do it after the class videos and class discussion forum questions so they can incorporate that into their journals. Whatever feels most comfortable to you is ultimately fine. The journals also provide an excellent opportunity to brainstorm and free write paper topics. Eventually you'll have more formal assignments, you'll have two formal papers, one midway through the semester that will be after the short story unit, and that will be a paper about short story. 
and then one towards the ending of the semester that will be after the drama unit, and that will be a paper about drama. And I will give you suggested paper topics, but you're also free to create your own. As long as you have it approved by me, you can pursue that paper topic. So perhaps the journals might be of use to you to try to formulate some paper topics. You can begin thinking now about those paper topics, even though we've only just begun the semester. And the way that I'm going to be evaluating these journals is informally, not for grammar or mechanics, but just for content, as if we were having a conversation on paper. So I am grading them on a check mark system where a plus is excellent, a check plus is good, a check is satisfactory, and there is a less than satisfactory and unsatisfactory, but most of the grades end up in the check plus or in the good section. And late journals will lower your grade by one full grade and no late journal will be accepted after a week has elapsed unless you've made other arrangements with me beforehand. And I've always been very flexible in all of my classes about due dates, but especially now with some of the challenges that we are experiencing. Certainly, if you need more time, just ask me for it. I'll be happy to grant it to you. And I ask that you submit those journals via PDF to my email. My thinking is that you will devote about a page or so to each of the pieces of writing that you are talking about. So at the ending of the short story unit, after we would have read about a handful of short stories, I'm going to ask you to select three out of that handful and to devote about a page or so for each of those three short stories and give your thoughts and reflections. So basically, your short story journal will be on three short stories with one page or so devoted to each of the short stories you select, to probably a, a total of three pages. But of course, you know, your journals can be as long or as short as they need to be. And then again, I will respond to that in a checkmark system and give you some of my thoughts and commentary as if we were having a conversation on paper. And then a couple of weeks after that, you would have a formal paper due where you would be writing about short story. And while we'll talk more about the papers themselves, I'm thinking approximately four to five pages, uh, double space, one inch margins, something that is very specific to one of the short stories we're reading, rather than just random thoughts or ideas, which you would be writing in a journal. And that's not to say that you couldn't use much of the writing that you had incorporated in your journal and adapt that to your paper. I, I certainly encourage that. But think of the journal more as note taking and the paper more as a final analysis where you are being evaluated for grammar and mechanics as well as for content. So the paper assignments will be distributed th through the term. I I'm going to be doing the same with the drama section, having you at the ending of the drama section select three of the dramas, and we're reading three dramas. So basically you wouldn't have choice in this instance. You would write about a page or so for each of the three dramas that we are reading. And then I would respond to that, give that back to you. And a couple of weeks after that, you would have a formal paper about drama that would be very similar to your formal paper about short story. The difference being that you're writing on drama rather than short story. Four to five pages or so, um, double space, one inch margins about a particular element or idea in drama as opposed, or one of the dramas, as opposed to the journals that could be more free flowing about thoughts and comments and so forth about the dramas, more than just plot, as we will talk about. And then that puts us towards the ending of the semester where we will be reading poetry. And there will be just enough time for you to submit in a journal about poetry, which would be very similar to the journals you did with short story and drama, that out of the handful of poems or so that we're reading, you would select three poems to write a journal about informally, about a page or so for each of the poems that you select. So if you're selecting three, three poems, that should be a three-page journal. Again, as long or as short as you'd like it to be. But we wouldn't have enough time to do a paper number three on poetry. And this is where the final exam comes in, where the bulk of the final will be devoted to poetry. Remember I had said that final is open book, open notes. What I'm going to be doing is selecting some of the poems that we would have talked about in class and ask you to choose two and to analyze those two poems in depth. 
based on what we've talked about in class. And if you get fortunate, perhaps you've talked about those poems in your journals and you can utilize that as well. There will also be a short question or, or a short answer question about drama and a short answer question, or I, I should say a short essay question on drama and a short essay question on a short story just to give closure to things. But the bulk of the final 80% would be on poetry. So you'll notice that if we continue reading along in the syllabus, there's a section about attendance, which I am gathering through your uh, response to the discussion questions. Class activity and discussion is extremely important, cannot be made up. So absences and tardiness will be negatively reflecting your participation grade. Anything more than two absences or not responding to two discussion questions could lower your grade. Um, so, and excessive absences or excessive, um, uh, um, um, excessive uh, non-answers to discussion questions could even result in failure. You don't need to notify me that you're going to be absent for a particular class, um, but certainly if you're going to miss several classes or you're going to need um, um, multiple extensions, please let me know. Consultations, again, you can consult with me during office hours or by appointment. And then you can see that I have a section on papers. As, and this section on papers is mostly about the formatting that they're due on the days specified, should be typed, double spaced, one inch margins, with numbered pages and cover pages that include the paper title, your name, and the course and section number, my name, the paper number, and the due date. Hopefully you've talked all about this in English 101, but I will review it as the semester progresses. Late papers, much like late journals, will lower your grade by one full grade. No late paper will be accepted after one week has elapsed unless you made other arrangements with me beforehand. So again, ask for an extension. I will assign paper assignments through the term or distribute them, I should say. You can elect to take any of those paper topics or create your own. And do note that you have the option to revise the first paper for a higher grade if you so choose. So I know that oftentimes the first paper leads to a little bit of anxiety. So once I've evaluated your first paper and put a letter grade on it, unlike the journals with the check mark grade, return it to you. If you're content with your grade, well then that's fine. But if you would like to redo it for a higher grade, you can take my comments into account. If you're still not sure how to proceed, you can always meet with me and I can give you further direction. And I ask that you submit in the original paper with my comments along with your revision and you'll get the higher of the two grades. The lower grade will disappear. And I don't feel like I'm giving you any unfair advantage. This is basically the way professional writers write with a good amount of feedback and a good amount of revision. So the second paper is going to be due towards the ending of the semester. So there probably wouldn't be time for you to revise it. The idea is that you would have learned from the first paper so that you can incorporate those skills into your second paper. That said, I have had students in the past who've been able to submit in their second paper early enough so that there is time for revision, but this is not guaranteed. This is something that you would need to negotiate with me. Everybody has the guarantee of a revision for the first paper. And that revision is due by the ending of the semester, so you've got time to do it. But certainly the earlier you can hand it in, the better off you are. Plagiarism, I'm going to skip that section. I'll talk about that next class and go to the grading section, which I suspect you are most interested in. The 10% that I'm calling participation, attendance in class assignments and activities and so forth, includes watching the class videos, answering the class discussion questions, and just basically being um, um, engaged in the course. 15% journals, as I indicated, you'll have three journals over the course of the semester, one for short story, one for drama, one for poetry. Each of those journals will be responding to three of the texts that we'll be reading in that particular unit, approximately a page so response for each of the texts. Paper number one, 25%, approximately a four to five page paper about short story, which you can rewrite for a higher grade. Paper number two, 25%. Also a four to five page paper, this time about drama. And you probably can't rewrite it, but there is at least the possibility if you were to hand it in early enough and negotiate with me. 
And then 25% final exam, the bulk of which would be on poetry, 80%, where I'm asking you to respond to two poems that I would have selected from our poetry section. Um, and I'll give you choice within there so that basically you can just reformulate what it is that we've talked about poetry in class and then expand and develop. 40% for each poem. So that's where you get your 80%. With 10% with a, a short essay question about drama and then 10% a short essay question about short story. And that basically is the class with an A, excellent, B, good, C, satisfactory. Yes, there are grades that follow the C, but I, I focus on those first three letters of the alphabet, especially on the first day of class. You'll also see that in our Moodle site, what I've got is a sheet that lists some of the grading criteria, the distinctions between A and B and C. And that's something that I'll talk about as the semester progresses as well. What I wanted to do was to talk a little bit about our course outline and what it is that we're going to be reading over the course of the semester. And you can see that I've got a disclaimer here that dates and assignments may be subject to change, but we will finish everything at the end. And assigned reading should be completed before the dates indicated. So this gives you an idea of what I'm going to be talking about in my class video during that particular time. So if you're looking at the course outline, and again, you can find this in syllabus and other documents, you can see that today's class, the 8th of February, was devoted just to introduction, where basically I tell you a little bit about the class and about our course outline. Ideally, on Thursday, the 10th, you will have had read these particular pages. Um, reading Imaginative Literature, 1 through 7. Critical Strategies for Reading, 1641 to 1642. Reading Fiction, 13 through 22 writing about fiction, 46 to 65, and that you skim, and by skim I mean skim, the glossary of literary terms. I just wanted you to be aware that there's a glossary at the ending of your textbook. Now, if you can't have these readings done by Thursday, do not panic. These are introductory readings. These are not the pieces of literature themselves. This gives you a general background of what literature is. So as far as I'm concerned, the class is really beginning next week and week two. Now, notice that even though you are probably watching this video perhaps on Sunday night or on Monday morning, I have this video listed as representational of the class that we would have met, we would have had on the 8th on Tuesday, which means that the next video that I will be posting or our next class, since this is supposed to qualify for our Tuesday class, will be for Thursday. And basically, I'll have a video every Tuesday and every Thursday, much like as if we were meeting every Tuesday and Thursday. Again, I might post that video early, but you can certainly expect to see that video by Tuesday and Thursday at 10 a.m. So again, the next time I will be posting probably will be Wednesday evening or Thursday morning for our Thursday class where I am going to continue our introduction trying to talk about literature. The readings are a little bit dense and dry, but they give you an overview of some of the ways that you could go about studying literature from an academic perspective. And then we get into the actual reading of the literature. These are the things that you could be writing journals about. So this is in week two, where we are going to read two short stories, one entitled The Secret Sorrow, one entitled The Sorrowful Woman. And while they both have very similar titles, they are very different in terms of content and quality, as we will discuss. We'll also continue some of the textbook readings about how to read and write literature, or write about literature, I should say, such as reading and the writing process. And on the 17th, we'll talk about the short story, The Story of an Hour by Kate Chopin. So we'll be revisiting a short story that would have been in the earlier set of readings that I had assigned just to familiarize um, yourself with uh, literature. And we'll also read a short story entitled A Rose for Emily. And some of these stories you may have heard of before because some of them are, are very iconic in the world of short story. We'll talk about why. On the 22nd, we will be reading and discussing Young Goodman Brown, a short story by Nathaniel Hawthorne, as well as Soldier's Home, a short story by Ernest Hemingway, and Battle Royal, which happens to be actually the opening chapter of a novel, but it was published as a short story. 
And these are the pieces, the literature that I've been, at least thus far, been able to find online links for, even though I'm not quite sure how that works for some of them with copyright. So whenever I can find a link, I will certainly share that with you when um, we get to that particular place in our readings. On the 24th is when we will be putting closure to the short story unit, where we'll talk about a short story called Girl by Jamaica Kincaid. And lastly, a short story entitled Popular Mechanics by Raymond Carver. And then what we will do is transition over in week four around the 1st of March into drama. So this is around the time that you would be handing in your first journal about short stories where I'm going to ask you to identify three of the short stories that we would have read in the short story unit and write approximately a page response to each of those short stories. So that would be a total of approximately three pages. That would be due around the 1st of March. Um, certainly, you can hand in your journals early once you've decided which short stories you want to write on. But by the 1st of March, we should have finished our short story units. So then you can make a decision about which short stories you want to select if you're not quite sure. Um, and you want to read them all first and discuss them all first before you commit to writing about them informally. So while you're writing, and, or at least submitting in writing about short story, we are in class talking about drama, what drama is, how to read it, how to write about it. Again, we have some introductory readings about drama, and then we move to our first full drama, a drama you might have heard of before, Oedipus the King by Sophocles. It's from Greece, 430 BC, so obviously we are reading a translation. We are reading it in English. And one of the things we need to discuss is why is it that we're reading something that is so old and so culturally removed from our own experiences? And why is this play considered to be so important that you oftentimes read it in English classes and literature classes? And you can see we've got multiple classes devoted to each of the dramas because one of the ways that drama happens to be different or plays happen to be different from short story or from novel or from poetry is that dramas are meant to be performed. So we will also be watching performance online, of course, um, as well as talking about the text itself. Not that watching a performance is in any way a substitute for reading the text itself. Those are two very different exercises. But we will be spending approximately two weeks or so for each of the three dramas that we'll be reading. So that'll give us time to watch performance as well as to talk about the drama. My hope is that while we are watching and talking about a particular drama, you would have finished reading it and you're on to the next one. So while we are talking about Oedipus, or I should say when we begin to talk about Oedipus on the 8th, my hope, though I know that, that hope and reality are sometimes two very different things, my hope is that you would have read Oedipus in its entirety by approximately the 8th of March, so that ultimately when we start our next drama, which happens to be Shakespeare, A Midsummer Night's Dream, on the 22nd of March, that you will have already had that drama read in its entirety. So while we're talking about Shakespeare, you're finishing up with our last drama at home, reading that, um, so that when we get to our last drama, Raisin in the Sun on the 7th, then you would have read that in its entirety. But again, I understand that sometimes life does not give you the option to do things in an ideal way. So notice that we have a spring break in the middle of our discussion about Oedipus. We're going to watch a performance of Oedipus and then we've got and talk about Oedipus the King. Then we've got a spring break and then we're going to move into midsummer. And then finally, what we are going to be doing is moving into A Raisin in the Sun. Paper number one on short story would be due around the 22nd of March. So by this point, you would have handed in your journal about short three short stories, and I would have responded, and hopefully that would have helped you with the construction of your first paper. You can also notice that on the 31st, there is no class. It's advising day. This is the day that's set aside, basically, for students to meet with their advisors to register for the next semester, since I'm keeping us on a Tuesday and Thursday pattern. So that occurs on a Thursday, the 31st. And you can see that after we are done reading A Raisin in the Sun, A Midsummer Night's Dream, which is our Shakespearean drama, and Oedipus the King, then we will have a journal due about all three of these dramas and dramatists being uh, Sophocles and Shakespeare and Lorraine Hansberry. 
So that would be due approximately the 21st of April, where you would be responding to all three dramas, approximately a page or so for each drama, so three pages total. And then we move forward as a class for the last several weeks for poetry while you are hopefully writing paper number two for drama. So you would have handed in a journal and I would have returned it back to you so that by the time we get to the 5th of May, you can hand in your second paper, which happens to be on drama. Again, early assignments always encouraged. While we are in the midst of talking about poetry. And when we start talking about poetry at the ending of April, we will begin much like we began with short story and drama, trying to determine what poetry is, how do you read it, how do you write about it, and then we'll start to read some representative poems starting on the 28th. Um, beginning with a Shakespearean sonnet. So I, I chose Shakespeare as the place to begin with poetry. Not that there wasn't poetry prior to Shakespeare. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? And I wanted to compare that poem to another poem that was written in approximately the same time period to his coy mistress in 1681 as opposed to 1609. This was written by Andrew Marvel to show the similarities and the differences. And then when we go into the 3rd of May, we'll read a poem entitled The Author to Her Book by Anne Bradstreet. Then a poem entitled The Sick Rose by William Blake. Some of these names are poems you might have heard of before. A poem called Because I Could Not Step for Death by Emily Dickinson. A poem entitled American Poetry um, that is I have listed as a handout. In other words, it is not included in your textbook, but certainly I will be providing an online link for that, or at least not included in the version of the textbook that I had ordered for the class. And then a poet that I suspect you've probably heard of before, Robert Frost, will be reading and discussing The Road Not Taken. We'll also be reading and discussing E.E. E. Cummings, next to, of course, God, America, I. We'll be reading and discussing Allen Ginsberg's poem, America. Again, this is the 5th of May, which is when prob probably your second paper will be due. And then we'll be finishing up on the 10th of May with three poems, The Lover Not Taken, um, Coca-Cola and Coco Frio, and a poem that you might be familiar with that was delivered at our past presidential inauguration, The Hill We Climb by Amanda Gorman. This is also on the 10th when you will be asked to submit in journal number three on um, three poems. And I will have that back to you before you take your final exam so that you can utilize your journals if you so elected to for your final exam. And that basically is the sum of the class itself. A lot of material that I don't expect you to remember. I just wanted to give you an overview. So for today's attendance question, I thought I would ask you for introductions because that's what we would do. That's what we would do if we were meeting in class. So you can see that what I've got posted is I'm asking you to please introduce yourself to the class in the class discussion forum question. Um, certainly you're encouraged to do things like include pictures or video, but you're not required to. That'll count as your attendance for today. Again, you're not required to respond to your classmates, but certainly you're encouraged to if you'd like. I will respond to all of you. And then what we will do is that we will continue on next class with talking about what is literature, how do we read it, and how do we write about it. So I hope you're doing well. I'm doing well. And we will continue on next class. Take care. Bye-bye.